Hey everybody, we are here in uh, Las Vegas, just driving around. We're not on the strip, but we're in Las Vegas. But since we're not Las Vegas experts, we're going to talk about Tijuana today. Yes. So introduce yourself. My name is Philly Dom. I'm a YouTuber, travel blogger. I go around the different countries. And I do have a, a lot of information on Tijuana, Mexico. I so lived, when was the last time you've been there? A couple, couple of weeks ago, a week, so, a week and a half, two weeks ago. So he's very current. He's very current with Tijuana. Yeah. Okay, so tell me what you've been doing the last month, couple of months in Tijuana. Uh, well, the last month in Tijuana, stuff. as current stuff I've been doing in Tijuana is um, um, I'm of Haitian descent. My family's from Haiti, so there's a lot of Haitians there now through the crisis in uh, Haiti. So I've been going to Tijuana to record videos and stuff like that. Also, I've been you know recording some videos on the nightlife. And showing you the dangerous neighborhoods like Zona Norte, and just giving people a feel of like the downtown Tijuana area. I've been focused in that area. Also, I went to like one of the rich areas called Hypodrome, mm -hmm. which is one of the most wealthy, wealthy, wealthy areas in uh, Tijuana. Yeah, I could take you there one of these days. And I've just been doing videos and letting people you know, showing the the, the the contrast between the rich and the poor, and the wealthy neighborhoods uh -huh. and the poor neighborhoods, and also showing people that. Tijuana is just not all poor. But for some reason, people think that everybody in Tijuana is poor when they have some really wealthy, wealthy people that live there that live in it, that hyperdrome area, if mm -hmm. I'm trying to paint the name right, that is very wealthy, very upscale, and a lot of money flows through there. So, so like, tell me the last couple of experiences crossing the border. What's, what do you need? What's different? Well, okay, now when you, when you cross now. Both ways, both ways. Okay. Well, going, okay, we're going to go into Tijuana from um, okay. San Diego or San Jacidro. Uh -huh. border, which is the most traveled border in the world. Okay. You just, you're, you're, if you walk through, I'm going to tell you both ways, walking and driving. If you walk through, they're going to want to look at your passport. They're going to want to give you a visa. Right now, they're only issuing people like these six-month visas, and you have to pay $30. Mm, yeah. And they're saying that you only can come to Tijuana if it's uh, some a priority. So if you want to go down there on some travel... Just tell them you're going to go see a dentist or you want to go uh, get a, a checkup or something like that. If you tell them you're going to travel, they probably will let you go anyway, but it's going to be $30 to go in. And once you get in there, you just walk in there and you can um, jump in a taxi and it'll take you wherever you want to go. Now, this is kind of funny because remember I said you need a visa. Mm -hmm. But if you drive through, say you drive through in your own vehicle. Mm -hmm. They just let you go through unless they flag your car over and I'll just ask for your license or your passport. So if you're driving, they don't want to stop you. you just they, keep going. Yeah, you can go straight in, and if wow. they do stop you, they're not going to ask you for no visa or nothing like that. They're going to just want to make sure they worry about the registration of the car. Okay. No, I think if you want to drive your own car, like all the way into Mexico, I think you need. What, what else you need? You need insurance. Uh, you, you need, need insurance. You post to if you want to do it the right way, you need to go get insurance at the border, so you can have Mexican insurance. And then if you're really gonna like, say you want to do a pass, you want to go past Tijuana, you want to go to other parts of Mexico, you want to be there for two weeks or something, you need to stop at that the border. As soon as you get in, park your car, you go inside, and you have to buy a, a it's called like some kind of pass. Some kind of driving pass through Mexico, and you got to put it in your windshield. Oh, okay. The windshield of your car, and that'll give you access to travel around, travel around Mexico. So anytime the Mexican police would pull you over, which they will, going to pull you over, because you just have in California or Arizona or New York place or something, there's a red flag to them, and they 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 can they don't need the same probable cause like like how we do in the states. They can stop you. For nothing. If they just, you blink an eye and they want to stop you, don't stop you and check and do a paperwork. So do you need some do you that, need some sort of COVID test or anything? No Everybody COVID test. Drive it in, you need no COVID test. Driving in, driving out of Mexico, no COVID test. Walking out of Mexico, no COVID Both test. Both ways, no COVID no test. No COVID okay. test. But no. you have to wear masks, right? You have to wear masks. They, uh, what are they doing, social distancing? I can't even say... Y'all can't even say yeah. it was doing social distancing, but people are wearing masks and stuff like that. Because I ate at a couple of restaurants indoors, mm -hmm. and they just piled up the restaurant like it was regular times. But would you say they're more relaxed about the mask rules? Right? Yeah, they're more relaxed about it, but they want you to wear it like if you go in the grocery stores or if you go to the gas station, you go inside to pay your gas, whatever. They made us wear face masks. Okay. The bars were more lenient with the rules, and the restaurants were more lenient with the rules. Now something. So we'll try to stay very current, like. 
I guess the, for a while there, the bars, the a lot of people go there for the nightlife. The bars were closed for a while, right? Yes. And right now they're open? The bars are open. Would you say it's back up to normal? Or they just, said uh, it's like up to, yeah, it's, it's 100% now. It's 100%. 100% now. Wow. So if you guys used to go for Tijuana for the nightlife, it's still going? Uh, yeah, I can give them some places to go to. You can go to... Um, is a, okay, let's talk about the public. Hong Kong Bar and Natalie's, is, is yeah, it open? They open, yes. But they open until 3 a.m. And then after 3 a.m., you have to go up into the hotels of both of the both of the places, both of the clubs, oh, okay. and finish the rest of the night up there until like six or seven, and then they open back up the bar downstairs. Okay, so the like, club again. So, I mean. so those clubs used to stay up until until they used forever. To be 20, 24 hours. hours. Yeah, yeah, like, I remember. Boom, boom, boom. I remember. Boom. Sometimes I would leave those bars and it'd be sunrise. Like, oh, okay. So now they have to close at three. Yeah. And you go to a different area, more yes. private. Yes. And then they open again about six or seven. Like six or seven in the morning, they open. Okay. Again. Downstairs for you, seven or eight, they'll be open. About eight o'clock, they'll be open. Okay. So we won't get specifics, but I heard the prices are a little higher now. Right? Yes. Too, too specific. Okay. So the prices, uh, I think about $20 more than. $20 they, more than, than what it used to be. So whatever we used to spend in, in uh, Tijuana, the nightclubs, expect about another 20 US dollars there. On to it, yeah. So t- let's talk about you got some family that rented an apartment there. How, how did that go? Oh, um, I. They just wanted to be down there, man. So they rented an apartment down there. It's pretty affordable. They're paying like uh, seven hundred US a month. It's in a gated community. It's three bedrooms. It's two two bathrooms. They got a, the master bedroom has a bathroom, and then it's a shared bathroom between the other two rooms. Mm-hmm. And they're paying seven hundred a month. Seven hundred dollars a month. And then they never have any sort of issues or problems or anything. Nothing. And then you know you have to pay your electric cable and everything, but like you know. Where could you get a place like that in San Diego, San Diego, California? No, three bedroom, three yeah. bedroom, two bathrooms, a living room, and a kitchen mm-hmm. for seven hundred dollars a month. Where so could you get that at? So this might not be Tijuana related, but you told me you drove all the way to Belize. Tell me yes. about that. Tell me about that. Okay. Uh, so he drove from the United States all the way to Belize. Yeah, I have that's a, very interesting. Yeah, I had a friend. He bought a car in San Diego, and we drove it. To uh, Tijuana, and we drove all we from Tijuana, Mexico, all we all we down to Belize. So basically, we stayed on. Um, we passed our Hermoso, well, Mexicali first. Tijuana, Mexicali, three hours. Then Hermoso was like six or seven down. Kept going down, and we passed into uh, Culiacan, Santa Loa, Culiacan. Culiacan right there, yeah. Before that, Sonora. We passed through Sonora, then. Uh, Kulakan, Sinaloa, Kulakan, then we pass into Guadalajara, start going left, go Guadalajara. Did you just keep driving or did you stop at some place? No, we drove. We just kept, kept driving. driving. That was about 40 hours. Did yeah. You well, we stopped. I'll tell you, we oh, did okay. stop. We, we stopped. stopped. At a point, we was like, we gave up. We was like, oh, we stopped in Mexico City okay. and stayed in uh, Central Historical in Mexico City. What kind I, of car did you guys have? Oh, it was a brand new, uh, what did you call it? What do you call it? Uh, was it a Range Rover? Is that the guy with the Range Rover? Yeah, it was a nice car. It was like a Range Rover. It was something really nice. It was a truck. It was nice. And what, Very expensive. What kind of problems did you have? Did you have any? They stopped us here and there just to check the tags on the um, on the windshield. And the guy was like, the police officers were like, because you guys are from this California place on the car. That's why we stopped you. Mm-hmm. But they didn't really get us for no bribes or anything like that mm-hmm. on the road. They were more concerned like... Is this car, who's, whose name is the car in? Because they said we didn't have problems with, like, say, the guy name that was on the registration wasn't there. Yeah. They would have had a problem with that because I think they have a problem with people stealing cars in Mexico and bringing them into the States. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, so, since we're on the topics of uh, oh, rights. Oh, man, we're in let's Chinatown, talk, yeah. This, so we're in Chinatown right now, I guess. Uh, so I... have Experience, and you experience Wait, dirty was. police, and well, we won't get too in depth, but yeah. the dirty police and uh, Tim, want to tell me some stories. Um, they always will get you. Like, see, if you drive through, right? If you have tinted windows on your car, like you have tinted windows on the back seat there. Yeah. Uh huh. So shit. I shouldn't even drive my car here. You shouldn't, because you're gonna you're gonna end up getting a bribe there. You going you might. Mm-hmm. It's it's not a hundred percent it'll happen. Mm-hmm. More in the nighttime, it happens in the daytime. They you can ride it in the daytime. The nighttime, you would have problems unless you would just. Drive around in the daytime, and then at night, if you're going to the border, uh-huh. 
That's the only time I would recommend you ride your car at night like that. But they don't stop everybody. You can go months and weeks and nobody will bother you. It's just, it's a, it's a finicky. It depends who's the officers are working yeah, or something like that. Do you think that. that's a Tijuana thing or do you think, if I uh, drive through. It's a Tijuana, Tijuana thing. Tijuana thing. It's a okay. Tijuana thing. Hmm. If you go other places, they can have common sense to say, hey, this guy has California plates. He's American or whatever. So. I'm very sure I've seen tinted windows in Mexico. Yeah, I've seen it there. But they said because of the, the shootings with the. They don't want you to have it, but that was it's more of a Tijuana thing because I've never experienced that nowhere else in, in Mexico. But yeah, they do bribe you if you're on the streets and you're drinking. Some people go go down there, they have such a good time, they get too open and they do too much. And anything you do wrong outside of their little rules and restrictions in Tijuana, they'll they'll find you for it. They you're not gonna go to jail. You don't have to worry about going to jail like that. They more scare factor. They want to get you for money. Like you could be on the street. They say, I, I think I think. You know, you say fine, but I think the that money they take from you goes to their pockets. It doesn't go Yeah, it's to not a fine. It's really them bribery. It's yeah, a bribery. Yeah, yeah. So. so if you just got to just, like, if I say if you're going to be there and you want to go from place to place, take a taxi or Uber from bar to bar, restaurant to restaurant, or wherever, try not to be on foot that much if you don't have to. Right. Especially in the evening times. During the day, you're all right. You can walk on foot during the day. Everybody watches what everybody's doing. So you don't really got too much to worry about, but in the evening time, evening time, watch out where you go. So, so let, we'll both talk about our experience, actual experiences with police stopping us. You told me one. Tell me, tell me. Yeah, the other day I was down here. I was in Tijuana the other day with a friend of mine, and uh, we were driving around late at night. We went to go drop something to another friend, and we were trying to. We were making our way to leave out of Tijuana, and it was like one o'clock at night. The cops pull us over, man, like right before the highway to make it there, right where we had to go to cross. And um, they said that we had to tell the windows on there. They made a big deal about these tents. They kept us there for an hour. They're not going to straight up tell you they want money. They want they want you to, like, cooperate with them. I'm like, uh -huh. so how much is this for this problem to get rid of? And then I'm like, okay, give us this. But we wasn't in that mood that day. So we were like, we're not going to pay you nothing. We're not going to give you no money. They told us they're going to tow the car. They told us all this. I told them, look, I've, I've lived in Tijuana for years and years and years, and I've never seen them tow an American person car. No. Uh, so so the cops will, in Tijuana, you got to be careful of them. Uh, not all of Mexico, but we're talking Tijuana specific. Is, yeah. If you do something illegal, they, they might uh, try to make you pay for it, but the money is not going to the government. Or no, it was going to their pockets. It's going to their pockets. So be extra careful there. They're looking for opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, one, one time I was walking back from the Zona Rosa to the border, and I got stopped by police, and they wanted to check my pockets and my wallet, which scared me because if they, if they see how much money you have. Yeah. But they always ask me, they ask me, do I have Viagra? I said, no, I don't have Viagra. Yeah. Because they thought I go to, might have went to a pharmacy and bought Viagra, or I came from the... The, the clubs and they thought maybe I needed some Viagra there and I, I was like nope they searched me and they let me go but I'm pretty sure if I did have some Viagra they would try to make me pay a fine or buy a bribe or something wow and they happened to me twice actually yeah for the Viagra and one time I joked with the lady because one was a lady one was a guy and I said I said I don't need Viagra and then they laughed and let, let me go yeah they're always up on the come up they're always on the come up there so you just got to just dot your eyes. You, I'm not saying not go there. You just got to be on your, your, just be smart with everything. That's all. But you'll, you'll be all right. Like, they won't. There's a Rio. Right there. Oh, the Rio right there. Okay. And a couple blocks is the strip. So, so we are going to drive on the strip a little bit. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we're going to go to some bar somebody recommended. That, but we're taking kind of the slow way here. We'll say, yeah, that's the scenic route. Scenic route. To let you guys see what's going on. Yeah, because uh, you guys all see the strip here. You guys might not see the other streets. I've had subscribers ask me, hey, show me the rest. Well, they told me to walk around the other parts, but uh -huh. it was, walking around all of uh, Las Vegas kind of wouldn't be okay. possible. Are the cameras working? Or is this faced the other way? Yeah, it's facing the other way. Okay, okay, because it's like black and orange. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Tijuana is a good place, man. I'm telling you, um, they... They did a lot of uh, uh what is it, what you call it, uh, what do you call, what can I say? They did they, they improvements, the improvements, yeah, or modernization, yeah, modernization, improvements, whatever you want to call it. 
It's, it's looking a lot better now. They have a lot of uh, up-to-date buildings on that Revolution Boulevard. Uh -huh. That's a good place for you to hang out. Good restaurants, good bars, good everything there. Good. Also, you can go down to Tijuana. People don't know. You can go down there to get your teeth done. They have yeah. good dental yeah. work they yeah. do there. The females that are into the plastic surgery, mm -hmm. they're good with the plastic surgery down there That's as right. well. It's known for. I, I thought about getting my dental done in there. Yeah, right? you get your dental done there. A lot of there. people... You get a lot of dentists. A lot of those dentists actually work in the United, United States. States. Yep. They do both, though. They go to Tijuana, get paid cash. They go to the U.S. and get paid you know, through the bank, yeah, like yeah. normal. Uh, so a lot, you can expect quality dental there. Uh, For sure, you can. I, I would still read your reviews and stuff. You, know, you never know. You can get definitely good quality, but that's the that's what it's known for. Also, Tijuana is known for people don't know that. Um, a lot of tele t TVs that you see, like the flat screen TVs and the regular TVs you see now, they produce a lot of TVs there. Don't don't take my word on it. You can Google it. It'll show up. Oh, I didn't know that. They have a lot of factories um, to manufacture TVs, like American companies and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What are some other reasons? We got medical. We got dental. Dental. Oh, tell me. Food. You're, yeah. I know you've talked about a lot of restaurants. Tell me your top two or three restaurants. Oh, uh, my top top restaurant would be a it's a it's a place a, a pizza place called Victorio's. Mm -hmm. It's an Italian restaurant, really is an Italian restaurant, but they have pizza there. The food is excellent. The lady is a, a Italian American from Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and her husband is Mexican from Mexico. I think he's from Guadalajara, and they open up a chain of them. They have like two of them in Tijuana, and it's called Victorio's. Man, the best Italian food you can eat, um, south of the U.S. border. Wow. Victoria. So Victorios will be one. What and, part of a mix? Uh, uh, that's on that? Revolution. Revolution, okay. Yeah, Victorios. Okay, so what's another okay, one? Okay. Let's give me a Mexican restaurant. Okay, now I'll give you a Mexican restaurant. Oh, well, you're going to go right through that one, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a Mexican I restaurant. Should, I shouldn't have done that, I guess. So. I, the Mexican restaurants are all good. I really can't say one that I could distinguish out. I know I go to a... a uh, uh, Argentinian restaurant there. That Argentina had, restaurant? Yeah, that has uh, real good food. I'm trying to think of the name. Can't think of the name offhand. He put me on the spot. He put me on the spot with that. Yeah. It's a, it's there, a, there's one I really like. I just can't I, don't, I can't remember the name. It's inside of uh, Cascados. Cas Cascades is the hotel. It's inside of that mm. hotel where Hong Kong is at. Mm. It's on the second floor. Oh. I, I like the one by the Tequan. Is it Tequan Hotel? Tequan, yeah. There's one about a block from there. Two okay. blocks in there. I really like that one. Uh, Caesars. Caesars. Uh, Caesars. That, Caesars restaurant. The restaurant. That one's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that's good, too. That's... I, I eat there every time. Okay. I get the cappuccino. I get uh, I get the food there. It's very good. They Caesar. actually said they invented the uh, Caesar salad. Yes, they had. They have invented it. So you guys probably heard of Caesars salad. There's a restaurant and hotel there. That, that's where they invented the Caesars salad there. And yeah. There are, there are, you always see, see them making it for people there, so that's okay. That's good. And okay, another restaurant. Azul. Azul is the Argentina restaurant I was trying to bring up before. I just remembered the name. Azul is a good restaurant for you to go. That's in Zona Norte. That's right by Hong Kong. They're on okay. top of Hong Kong. Like, once you go into the hotel of Hong Kong, the restaurant is there. You could ask anybody. Azul. 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 It's um, Argentina, and they have great, great, great food. So, how much are we talking about drinks here? Drinks and, uh, in different bars. And, and, different and, bars. Oh man, Hong Kong would probably be the most expensive. Like four bucks for a beer would be like the like four or five bucks would be like on the high. Yeah. And then um, one to two bucks you can get beer there. And then you know you talk about the IPAs, they do all the special stuff to make the IPA beers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit more expensive. But if you went somewhere away from that. It Probably like a dollar dollar fifty for a beer. Yeah, yeah. Pretty affordable. Uh, okay, so let's talk about what are some tips to stay safe. What do you do to stay safe then? Stay in the the the, the tourist areas. You know, do the do the Revolution Street. No problem there. Yeah, go, Revolution. Yeah. yeah, go to Zona Zona. It's called Zona Rosa. Mm -hmm. or, or Plaza Rio area. Real. Yeah, you can go there. That's like one of the most wealthiest neighborhoods in Tijuana. Oh, isn't Zona Rosa where the bars are? Or isn't that the street? Yeah, Zona, yeah, Zona Rosa is where all the bars are. That's uh, uh, Plaza Rio. It's Zona Rosa. Oh, okay. It's okay. Zona Rosa. And they got a place there. If you're looking for bars, you're looking for good restaurants there, 
You can go to Plaza Rio, which is the mall. They have restaurants there. Or you can go across the street called, uh, what is it called? Uh, Plaza Zapato. Oh, okay. And it has a, nothing but like a whole bunch of bars and restaurants there too as well. That's a safe zone. If you want to jump in a taxi, want to pay like 25 bucks or 30 bucks, that's stench again. You can go down to uh, uh, Rosarito Beach, which is only like 15 or 20 minutes away from Tijuana, Mexico. So how, how can you go to Rosarito from Tijuana? Uh, take a, The best thing to do is just take an Uber. It's like $25. Take an Uber there, okay. Yeah, it's like $25 will take you there. So Tijuana has Uber, no problem? Yes, they have Uber, no problem, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Or you could just jump into a taxi. He'll make up a price. Another thing, people... Yeah, tell me about the taxi thing. They make up prices with the taxi drivers there. They're not like how El Salvador is. They'll make up a price. It'll be an American price and a Mexican price. Mm-hmm. Yep. So whatever price they give you, you never agree to that price. And before you get in the taxi, yep. you make up a price. Uh-huh. You don't want to get to your destination and he tells you 50 bucks for something that's only like a $10 ride. Yeah, that place to everywhere, guys. Don't yeah. you, you should ask the price before you buy yeah, a lot it, of things. Have it negotiated. Give it... After you negotiate, give him the money in his hand so he's already, it's done. That money doesn't have to come up no more because mm-hmm. in Mexico was a big deal with that, man. Like, they'll get you in, hey, my friend, da 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 And then you get to your location, and then they're telling you, oh, it's going to be this price. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. da 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 And it gets kind of crazy. Yeah, so I, I've seen this in a lot of countries. You, you need, a lot of times you need to ask the taxi how much because uh, they will cheat, uh, cheat you. Some places are honest, like Medellin, I didn't have a problem. They, yeah. They'll turn the meter on. A lot of countries will turn the meter on. Okay. But even if they turn the meter on, sometimes they might do little circles and stuff. So I always use Google Maps on my phone. I, I look to see where this taxi guy's driving. Okay. Double check. Um, yeah, so so wow. we talk about taxis. We talk about taxis. Taxis about... will try to cheat you there sometimes. Yeah. Uh, oh, the this... tacos. You're talking about the tacos. Got to tell me about the tacos. Okay, tell me about tacos. Tijuana, man, I'm not bragging about this. The food situation is good there. If you ever want to eat good tacos, you can literally go to almost any taco stand. I'm not making this up. And they have good tacos. But the best tacos I have ate have all been in uh, the Zona Norte area, which is uh, near Hong Kong, right in, right, in, right, in, right around the corner from Hong Kong, Chavela's, Anelita's. You can ask anybody about them bars, they'll tell you where to go. But the the main one there that's the best one that has really good tacos that out this that um outdoes the rest in my opinion. My opinion. There's a Las Vegas sign, guys. Sorry, see, there, yeah. that's the one of the tourist spots. So okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's called uh the name of the uh taco place is called Taco Danny's. Taco Danny's. Let's ask anybody about Taco Danny's. What's the guy that committed suicide, the YouTuber? I think he committed suicide or he died. He was well, um, Bourdain, Bourdain? Anthony Bourdain, yeah. He went there and ate the oh, tacos yeah. there, yes. Oh. Yeah, they I are good that. tacos. I mean, you can get meat tacos, steak tacos, pork tacos, and you wouldn't even think it's pork. It tastes like regular chicken meat. What was the name of that place? Or are you just going Yeah, no, that's the name of it. Uh, Danny, Danny Tacos. Danny Tacos, yeah. okay. Taco Danny's, that's Taco exactly. Danny's, yeah. okay. You can Google it, it's well known. I put it in my videos, you check out my videos, Philly Dom, you'll see it there. Okay. Taco Danny's, Taco Danny's. So the food is good there. And if you're into Asian food, they have uh, Chinese food there. If you're into Thai food, they have Thai food there. You went to, uh, uh, what is it, uh, sushi. They got sushi there. You can get whatever you want. Oh, they, yeah, 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 it's all, all good. You can't go wrong. The food is excellent. But the one thing I had to highlight about Tijuana, on a positive note, you can go anywhere and get good, good, good food there. Yeah, that's true. And actually, they got pretty decent shopping. And, uh, yeah, they have pretty decent shopping. They have, uh, their malls are up to date. They have more like strip malls, mm-hmm. but they have pretty good malls. The malls are up to date. Everything is, uh, Tijuana gets a bad name, like I said, in news, you know, due to the, the, the drug situation and stuff mm-hmm. there. But besides all that, it's just like El Salvador. If you're not looking for that type of lifestyle, You'll have a good time there, and they actually have good, good places there that, that people always overlook. Right. And another area I would recommend you to go to that a lot of people will never bring this up. It's called Agua Caliente. They have a bunch of bars, restaurants. There's that's in Tijuana. Yes, in Tijuana. Okay. 
I've been Called to the city. Agua, you've been to Revolution. I've been to the city. Yeah. Agua Caliente. Yeah, Agua Caliente. Okay. Bunch of bars, a bunch of restaurants. And they have a, uh, I got to highlight it, man. I got to highlight it. They have a, a place there called uh, Galleria's, Galleria Hypodrome, which I told you is that wealthy neighborhood called Hypodrome. Mm-hmm. And it's a mall there called Galleria's Hypodrome. You want to go there, they got everything there. They got a fitness center there. They got a movie theater. There. They got a, uh, the, the couple, you know, Carl's Jr. They have uh, Applebee's. They have uh, Brazilian steakhouses. Mm-hmm. They have uh, the dollar bar I talk about, um, Chaputepec, Sylvester Chaputepec. Mm-hmm. They have everything there, man. You need to go there, check it out. You'll have a good time. They got a Walmart there and a bunch of, they got Starbucks there. They got, there's so much stuff to name. It's called Galleria's Hyperdrome. And that's on Agua Caliente. And if you're into gambling and you like gambling, that's like their Vegas of gambling. Right next door to the mall is the biggest casino in Tijuana, Mexico. I mean, it's a humongous, humongous casino there. Yeah, are people still going there to buy stuff at pharmacies? Yes, they are. They are. They are. They are. They are. Yeah, I remember uh, I did that when I was really young. I used to go to the pharmacy buy stuff, but... People still uh, do it now. So they, a lot of people still cross the border by by medications at the pharmacies. Uh, you have to check with your own law. It depends on what you're buying. Uh, uh-huh. If you're buying some things, it's easy to bring back legally. Uh, so <laughs> definitely, definitely check the laws on that. Oh, yeah. Don't just buy anything and try to sneak it back to the border. No, but check the laws really on Check it. the laws on that. But, yeah, a lot of people go... To that, they do dental, they go plastic surgery. Plastic surgery. Uh, mm-hmm. Some people go there for checkups. It's pretty cheap. They go there for a checkup. They have they have good doctors there in mm-hmm. Tijuana. I think some people go there to get their car fixed. Huh? People go there to get their car with Yep, they do. They do okay. cheap. Uh, they do cheap stuff for your car. If auto mechanic work, if you just need auto mechanic work, if you need body work, it's definitely way especially cheaper. The body work, yeah. Especially the body work, way mm-hmm. cheaper than you would get it done in uh, San Diego, California, or oh, Los Angeles, or. Phoenix, Arizona, or wherever else you would go. I know a lot of people that take a nice car, but they want a paint job. They want the body work. They want the body kits. You just you go. They take it to Tijuana and get a uh, get it great quality job and yeah. low price. I mean, we talking like thousands of dollars off. Like save lots of money. On lots, that. lots yeah. of money, man. There's guys that come down there and get their cars painted and everything down there. A lot of paint jobs. Right? A, lot a lot of paint jobs down yeah. there. A lot of repair, car repair, paint jobs. Yeah. How much was like a haircut there? Haircut there is five bucks, five to seven bucks. Five to seven dollars for a haircut. Yeah, yes. I'm, I've gotten my haircut in uh, Tijuana a couple times, and yeah, it's it's better than trying to get your haircut in the yeah, U.S. Yeah, it's yeah. five to seven bucks to get a haircut there. That's good. Uh, so what else? Are you gonna do? Uh, uh, what else could I tell you about? It's it's a lot safer than people think it is, and it's it's it's, it's not as dangerous as people say. I mean, it's it's always promoted. Even in my videos, we promote it as the most dangerous city in the in the world. Mm-hmm. But that's by, uh, what should I say, murder rate. Murder but, rate. Yeah. Murder. But like I said once again, and I'll repeat myself over and over and over and over again like a broken record. If you're into that type of lifestyle and the drugs and stuff like that, you could get yourself a, in a bad situation in one of the country. But if you just go in there to have a good time and do the right thing and enjoy having fun with your friends and your family or whoever you're going down there with, You'll be all right. The state to the tourist traps, the tourist locations, you will not have no problems. If you want to check out my channel, Philly Dom, and Google my videos on Tijuana, you can see everyday life in Tijuana, and you can see what I'm talking about. And I, I've recorded the, the the dangerous neighborhoods as well as some of the richest neighborhoods there. So okay. check out my channel, Philly Dom, and I can break it down to you, to the nitty gritty. Yeah, so guys, we're going to end this video pretty soon. Check out philly dom's channel because he's been there so many times he's going back really soon he can answer all your questions he's got lots of videos of tijuana yes indeed. uh we're gonna go eat pretty soon and we want we wanted to see uh, las vegas not just the strip there so yeah so we go let you see other parts of vegas if you guys have some other things you want we're gonna be together for at least a couple of weeks so if you guys have any other things you want us to talk about uh we will make videos talking about them similar kind of video Sometimes we might do walking instead of driving. Yeah. Uh, just let us know. So, once again, check out Philly Dom. Yeah. With, uh, hit like, subscribe, and talk to you guys later. Talk to you guys. See you guys in the next video.